Welcome to what is undoubtedly going to be a bit of a microtransaction meltdown as I have two pieces of microtransaction related news. One of which is related to a game which already had them, but first things first, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, Treyarch introduced a new update just yesterday. And it had some cool stuff like weapons through the black market, through supply drops, as well as new taunts, variants, calling cards and a bit more. But they also added a microtransaction system because of course, you know, a multi-million dollar game like Call of Duty needs to make some money, right? I mean, there's no way that they can make the money back on this hugely successful franchise. Before I begin on that path, which you, you all know where it goes, but let's uh, continue. You can earl, or earn all the new items, rather, by playing the game and trading Cretopolis you earn for supply drops in the black market. But you can, of course, now purchase what they've called originally Call of Duty Points. This comes via the Activision blog, which I will link in the description below this video. So here's what Activision has to say, quote, For fans that want a secure additional supply drop in multiplayer or vise of liquid divinium in zombies, we're introducing Call of Duty Points. A new optional virtual currency for players on PS4, Xbox One and PC. Starting today, fans can purchase Call of Duty Points and use them to acquire rare supply drops in Black Ops 3. For Zombies fans, Call of Duty Points can also be used to purchase vials of Liquid Divinium otherwise earned by playing Shadows of Evil or the giant bonus map which can be used to create Gobblegums in Dr. Monty's factory and aid in the fight against the undead hordes. Items contained in supply drops and Gobblegums remain the same regardless of whether they are unlocked with Crypto Keys, vials of Liquid Divinium or Call of Duty Points. Additionally, Call of Duty Points can be used for further in-game content such as the Extra Slots Pack. So, some of you are wondering, well, how much money can you spend? Quite a lot, actually. One of which, actually two of which, I'm not a microtransaction. So, these are going to be British and European prices, but you can roughly expect the European prices to equal US dollar prices. So, you have the 200 pack, which is £1.60 or €1.99, Euro the one, sorry, 101,000 pack, which is 7 99 or €9.99, Euros 2400 pack, £15.99 or €19.99, Euros and the 5000 pack, which is £31.99 or €39.99. Euros that is not a microtransaction. Neither of £16, by the way, could probably get a pretty decent game for that on Steam, especially in sale. I mean, £8 is pushing it, but goy, I mean... <sighs> you know how I feel about microtransactions in full price games. I don't care how optional it is, they should not be there in the first place, especially when it's a full priced triple A release. Like. Killing Floor 2, I could kind of let them off because it's an indie team, it's not a full price game and it seemed like they were completely and utterly cosmetic and even if they did add gameplay changing effects in the future, they were shared across servers so no one can get an advantage and of course it's a PvE game and not a PvP game. This is obviously not the case with Call of Duty Black Ops 3 and even if there's no case of advantage gained or anything like that, which I would seriously question, it's still does not need to be there. You cannot argue that Call of Duty needs microtransactions in order to be profitable. Seriously, anyone who argues that just just no. No. It's Call of Duty. It's probably making Activision like a thousand pounds a minute or something silly. And yes, I'm being a bit facetious, but come on. <sighs> Next up is Destiny, which of course already had microtransactions, but now <laughs> there's something else. You can pay £25 to boost the character to level 25. Uh, and they're available for each of the game's three characters, Titan, Warlock and Hunter. Oh, and by the way, that's per character. So you can't just pay £25 and level up all your characters. No, no, no. You have to do it per character. Now, of course, the Taken King, when it launched back in September, it did have one character boost included. This is the same offer, but it does have a subclass boost and some telemetries for quickly upgrading weapons as well. And I'm sorry, this is absolutely disgusting. I mean, disgusting does not even seem a strong enough word for how horrible this is. I mean, really? £25 to boost to level 25? Say, hey, you can pay half the cost of the game to not play the game. And I suppose you could argue, but, you know, Amy, 
What if someone has already played the game, but they just want to want to re-roll as a new character? Okay. They should still not have to pay £25 to p skip content. Yes, it's optional, but I don't care. This g <laughs> Destiny is already notorious for being too expensive with its expansions and DLC and everything else. And now they're doing this? No, and giant flaming letters lit up with neon from the back. Again, it doesn't matter how optional it is. This should not be in the game. I'm sorry. Or if it is, it should be like £5 or something silly. But even then, I would question it. But the fact that it's £25... <laughs> oh, Christ. Just no. I'm gonna go have a drink. <laughs> oh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.